So I've had a lot of comments where people are unable to find their drive in their file explorer, either a new drive when they've moved over from another system, when they've made significant changes to, and then the other side of the coin is some people just want to be able to change their drive letter so that it matches maybe what it was in another system, or they just want it to be a particular letter for a particular reason. For example, I have my portable YouTube drive always be drive Z so that no matter what, it's always going to be that drive letter. No matter how many drives are on the system that I plug it into, it's always going to be Z so that everything that I have pointing at that drive never going to get messed up because it's always going to be Z. So as you might be able to figure out, the reason why a lot of people's drives do not appear is because they haven't been assigned a drive letter or they haven't been initialized yet. And I'm going to show you how to do that in Windows. The nice thing is this is all built right into the system. You don't have to download any programs to do this. You can do it right within the built-in tools. So no matter what version of Windows you're on, it's very, very simple. You're going to go ahead and go to the create and format hard disk partitions, or it's going to be called the disk management. Once that goes ahead and loads up, it's going to take a couple minutes depending on how many drives you have. All right. So as you can tell, I have a lot of disks. Um, and you can see that they all have drive loaders assigned to them. To do an example, I inserted a USB stick um, and you can assign drive letters to USB sticks. Um, and this is extremely helpful. So as I was mentioning earlier, I have my YouTube drive, which is an NVMe drive in an enclosure. It's two terabytes and I use this to keep all of my YouTube stuff um, on a particular drive so that I can edit all of my videos no matter if it's on my computer, if it's on my laptop, if it's on somebody else's computer, it has all of the files necessary for DaVinci Resolve to be able to run properly. It has all of the, di the directories all set up. So it's a super handy tool that I use. And because it's set as drive Z, no matter what, um, no matter how many drives are on that system, as long as there's not, you know, almost 24 of them, um, I'm totally good. So, that's why I have it signed as like the last letter. If you have something that's the same kind of purpose, I would highly suggest that you assign it as low of a letter as possible so that you can have the same kind of benefit where no matter what system you are in, it has the exact same drive letter. So we have this USB, which is the K drive. You can see this here. So sometimes, Sometimes a drive will have no letter. And if it has no letter, you will see that that drive disappears from my file explorer. So this is a very, very common thing when people move drives over from one system to another, or sometimes even when they install a new drive and it doesn't initialize itself properly, you'll get into a situation where it's not appearing. So sometimes it won't have a partition and that's when it shows up black on the disk management. If there is no partition there, you can right click that area and do new simple volume. And typically with SSDs, you don't have to create multiple partitions to protect data, but on hard drives, especially really large hard drives, it's usually a good idea to split them into at least two so that if there's a corruption that happens on one partition, it doesn't affect the files on the other partition. Um, so yeah, so that's gonna be your first step if it's completely unallocated and there's no partition there. But sometimes there's just no letter and all you have to do in this case is right click it, go to chain drive letters and path, add a letter. We're gonna add K, cause that's gonna be the next one in the list. Um, it's always gonna choose the next one available to you. Just like when you plug in a USB drive, it's always gonna use the next one. It's gonna avoid A and B and it's gonna use the next in line. Um, so for this one, it's K. Go ahead and press okay. It's gonna add K. And then if I refresh my Explorer here, you're gonna see it up here. Um, so again, if you want to change one, you can right click it, change drive letter, change it, and you can change it to any of the letters here. And again, super helpful because a lot of programs, Steam, DaVinci, basically every program on Windows looks at particular drive paths. When you look at a drive path, the letter is the initializer for that path. So if the letter is constantly changing, the programs are not going to know where those files are supposed to be and it becomes very problematic. So like I said, for my DaVinci, no matter what computer I'm on, it's always gonna look at the Z location. And because I have my 
drive set to Z and it's the last one, it's always going to be Z. So no matter where I use it, it's going to appear and the programs are going to know where those files are going to be. Now, if it doesn't appear in disk management at all, the first thing I'm going to suggest you do is go ahead and check the connections. So if it's a SATA drive, make sure that your SATA and your power um, connections are snug, uh, maybe even unplug them and replug them back in. If it's an M.2, make sure, sure it's seated properly. Um, in the M.2 slot, I have videos on these, so you can go ahead and check those out. I will leave something up top here. The next place to look is actually in your BIOS. Your BIOS will have an area where you can see all of the storage attached to your computer. If it's not appearing there, then your computer as a whole is not identifying that drive. There's either an issue with it um, or something is just not connected properly, so double check. If you get through all of that and you're still having issues, you're more than welcome to hop into the Discord, uh, create a post in the help desk section, and we can try to help you out. But yeah, this is pretty straightforward. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my patron sponsors, Slot Slime and Step Back, and thank you for watching this video. If you do want to see any of my other computer tech help videos, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.